Proposition 15 increases funding sources for public schools, community colleges, and local government services by changing tax assessment of commercial and industrial property, initiative constitutional amendment. Plain language, requires commercial and industrial properties, except those zoned as commercial agriculture, to be taxed based on their market value rather than their purchase price. The background. California cities, counties, schools, and special districts, such as a fire protection district, collect property taxes from property owners based on the value of their property. Property taxes raise around $65 billion each year for these local governments. Overall, about 60% of the property taxes go to cities, counties, and special districts. The other 40% goes to schools and community colleges. These shares are different in different counties. Property taxes apply to many kinds of property. Land and buildings are taxed. Businesses also pay property taxes on other things they own. This includes equipment, machinery, computers, and furniture. We call these things business equipment. Each property owner's annual property tax bill is equal to the taxable value of their property multiplied by their property tax rate. The typical property owner's property tax rate is 1.1%. In the year a piece of land or a building is purchased, its taxable value typically is its purchase price. Each year after that, the property's taxable value is adjusted for inflation up to 2%. When a property is sold again, its taxable value is reset to its new purchase price. The taxable value of most land and buildings is less than what they could be sold for. This is because the price most properties could be sold for grows faster than the 2% per year. Unlike land and buildings, business equipment is taxed based on how much it could be sold for today. County assessors determine the taxable value of property. County tax collectors bill property owners. County auditors distribute tax revenue to local governments. Statewide, counties spend about $800 million per year on these activities. And now for our Prop 15 trivia question. Of all the taxes your city and county collect, what percentage of local taxes come from property taxes? The answer coming up shortly. Long story short. Cities, counties, schools, and special districts are funded with money collected from property taxes. In the case of businesses, which is all we'll be dealing with here, businesses pay property taxes on their land and property. What does it do? Three things. This proposition requires businesses to be taxed on how much their land and buildings are worth today instead of being taxed on their original purchase price as is the case currently. This change will be put in place over time starting in 2022. The change does not start before 2025 for properties used by California businesses that meet certain rules and have 50 or fewer employees. Housing and agricultural land continues to be taxed based on its original purchase price. Two, Prop 15 does not apply if the owner has $3 million or less worth of commercial land and buildings in California, adjusted for inflation every two years, of course. These properties continue to be taxed at an original purchase price. Third, this measure reduces the taxable value of each business's equipment by $500,000 starting in 2024. Businesses with less than $500,000 of equipment pay no taxes on those items. All property taxes on business equipment are eliminated for California businesses that meet certain rules and have 50 or fewer employees. Side note, donate to The Daryl Johnson Show today if this is helpful for you and you'd like to reconvene in 2022. Check out the box below. At paypal.me slash The Daryl Johnson Show, you can input any amount you like, large or small, as well as at patreon.com slash The Daryl Johnson Show. If you want to practice paying property taxes before you do it for real, you can also donate 5 to 10% of the total value of your home at either of these links. Then when you actually pay property taxes, you'll already have the flow of it down. Fiscal Impact most owners of commercial land and buildings worth more than $3 million would pay higher property taxes. Property taxes on business equipment would probably be several hundred million dollars lower each year, which would be a decrease in revenue. This measure would give several hundred million dollars per year to counties to pay for their costs of carrying out this measure. Beyond that, the fiscal impact of Prop 15 would be an added tax revenue of up to $7.5 to $12 billion in most years, depending on the real estate market that would go to local governments. 60% would go to cities, counties, and special districts. The other 40% would go to increased funding for schools and community colleges. Each school or community college's share of the money is mostly based on how many students they have. Not all governments would be guaranteed new money. Some, in rural areas, may end up losing money because of lower taxes on business equipment. From Yes on Prop 15. Prop 15 will close corporate loopholes. We are all better off when everyone pays their fair share. But California is giving away billions of dollars in property tax breaks to wealthy corporations. These billions could be used instead to deal with increasing inequality, persistent poverty, unemployment, unaffordable housing, 
homelessness, and underfunded schools. While the wealthiest corporations avoid paying their fair share, our schools have the most crowded classrooms in the nation, and our local communities are struggling to respond to the impact of COVID-19. Wealthy corporations avoid reassessment by employing highly paid tax lawyers and accountants to exploit loopholes in the law. Prop 15 closes those loopholes by requiring non-residential properties to be assessed based on their actual fair market value. The top 10% of California's most valuable non-residential commercial properties account for 92% of Prop 15's new revenues. It does not impact homeowners and renters. Prop 15 exempts all residential properties, maintaining full Prop 13 protections for homeowners and renters. It cuts taxes for small businesses. Prop 15 protects small businesses and cuts their taxes by exempting businesses operated out of a home and businesses owning $3 million or less of non-residential commercial property and cutting business personal property taxes on equipment, computers, and fixtures. Restore balance to the property tax. Since Prop 13 passed, the residential share of property taxes has skyrocketed from 55% to 72% and the non-residential commercial share has fallen. Meanwhile, we're paying more in fees and fines and other taxes. This will keep Prop 13's low 1% limit, so California's business property taxes will still be below most states. Invest in essential workers and local services. Prop 15 gives local communities desperately needed resources so essential services and frontline workers can respond to current challenges and prepare for future crises, whether from a wildfire, pandemic, or earthquake. Prop 15 rebalances the scales, increase funding for schools and community colleges. Every school district and community college will receive additional funding over and above existing funding guarantees. Prop 15 funds go directly to education and state politicians can't take it away. Support economic and racial equity. Prop 15 makes sure the schools with the greatest needs get the most help and gives local communities critically needed resources to deal with unequal impacts of COVID-19, unemployment, and housing costs on communities of color. Prioritize full transparency and accountability by requiring schools and local governments to publicly disclose new revenues they receive and how they are spent. Protect agricultural land. Prop 15 makes no change to existing laws affecting the taxation or preservation of agricultural land. Prop 15 supporters are teachers, nurses, business owners, clergy, affordable housing advocates and community organizations who want to close corporate tax loopholes and rebalance the scales. Prop 15 opponents, wealthy corporations, out-of-state investors trying to keep their tax breaks by using scare taxes to confuse the issue. Prop 15 takes a big step forward to a better future for all Californians. It was placed on the ballot by the signatures of over 1,700,000 voters who want wealthy corporations to pay their fair share. Please add your voice to theirs. Vote yes on Prop 15. And now the answer to our trivia question for Prop 15. What percentage of local taxes are property taxes? The answer, 72.3%. If you are participating in an election prep party night, anyone who guessed between 60 and 80% gets one point. And just for the record, sales taxes account for an additional 21.3%. Other various taxes, such as parcel taxes and some business license taxes, make up 6.4% of local government tax revenues. From no on Prop 15. All Californians will pay for what will be the largest annual property tax increase in California history, up to $12.5 billion per year. Prop 15's massive increase in annual property taxes will have disastrous economic impacts for every Californian, from small businesses to consumers to farmers and homeowners. Prop 15 repeals taxpayer protections in Prop 13. Prop 13's taxpayer protections have kept property taxes affordable by capping property taxes and limiting increases annually, providing taxpayers certainty that they can afford their property taxes now and into the future. Prop 15 eliminates that certainty for millions of taxpayers. Supporters of the tax hike openly admitted that this is merely the first step in completely dismantling Prop 13. They admit they'll go after Prop 13 protections for homes next, meaning skyrocketing taxes for all homeowners. 
Prop 15 raises our cost of living. Prop 15's tax hike will increase costs on everything people buy, including groceries, fuel, utilities, daycare, and health care. Alice Huffman, president of the California State Conference of the NAACP, and someone you'll be hearing a lot from this election, says, Too many families have been priced out of their neighborhoods because of the rising cost of living. Prop 15 will raise the cost of living for California families up to $960 and will especially hurt lower income communities. We will all end up paying higher costs for groceries, including milk, eggs, and meat. Prop 15 destroys jobs and small businesses. Most small businesses rent the property on which they operate. Nothing in Prop 15 stops the tax from being passed on to small business tenants. Prop 15 will make the economic crisis worse by devastating small businesses, including our neighborhood restaurants, barber shops, and dry cleaners. Seven million Californians work for a small business. Millions of Californians are filing for unemployment and are at risk of losing everything. Prop 15 raises taxes for family farmers, resulting in higher costs for food. Prop 15 will raise property taxes on farming, including barns, dairies, processing plants, and even fruit and nut trees. Prop 15 lacks accountability. It will cost taxpayers $1 billion a year in bureaucratic expenses, and politicians can spend the higher property tax revenue on anything they want, including administrative costs, outside consultants, and pay raises. Prop 15 allows politicians to divert its tax hike revenue to anything the special interests want, just like they're doing with the gas tax, says Marilyn Markham, board member of the California Senior Advocates League. Independents, Democrats, and Republicans agree, no on Prop 15. Prop 15 will not solve today's budget deficits. The nonpartisan legislative analyst says most funding won't arrive until 2025. Additionally, the California Assessors Association says Prop 15 will cost more than $1 billion to implement, meaning deeper cuts to already stretched local government budgets. Prop 15 supporters say it's about more money for education, but nearly 70% of the tax money doesn't even go to schools. If you've been watching me for a while, you already know where I'm going. This is a no for me. California is perpetually begging for more taxes every election cycle. And the favorite is the do it for the children. If you voted this spring, you noticed that California tried to pass a $15 billion bond for schools and colleges. Well, look, it's almost winter. Time for a winter tax for the schools. So refreshing. Because this comes up so much, I made a ready-made raise taxes for schools drop-in video for every election cycle that we'll cut to in three, two, one. It would be so easy if it really was as simple as raising taxes one more time. But unfortunately for California, money is not the answer. Should we believe that we are always one tax away from solving California's problems? Some districts in California spend as much as $25,000 per student each year. California is the eighth largest economy in the world, and more than 50% of all California's revenue is earmarked for education. That means that more than 50% of the eighth largest economy in the world is spent on our education system. The California Constitution stipulates that any time the general fund receives any new tax revenues, 54% of that must go to education right off the top. But that's still not enough. We just need more money. That will solve our problems. 50% of the revenue of the eighth largest economy in the world just isn't enough. Japan spends 3.3% of their gross domestic product on education. South Korea spends 16%. Canada spends less than 5%. But somehow we are able to do that magic trick where we spend three times as much and perform more than three times as poorly. That takes skill. The truth is, the $50 billion we spend on education each year is going somewhere. And the fact that California students repeatedly embarrass themselves on the world stage is an education problem, not a money problem. It's a family problem, not a money problem. It's a community, culture problem, not a money problem. Yet they would have us believe that one more tax will fix our problems. But can you imagine the day when the education board calls a press conference to announce that they finally have enough money? No more is needed. Everybody is paying their fair share, and we're all good now. This will never happen. 
despite spending far more on education than almost anyone in the country or world, the situation never improves. Money is no substitute for engaged parents, engaged students, and engaged teachers. But the truth is, this really isn't about the students. It's about California struggling to fund public pension funds. It's about poorly bargained contracts, and it's about mismanagement and waste. It's a famous story by now. LA County told its residents that they really needed to pass a $50 million construction bond. It was really important. Then they took the money and bought iPads for everybody in the Los Angeles School District. I don't have time to go through it all, but if you're curious, you can just Google it. Just Google, uh, I don't remember. Oh yeah, LA Unified School District's $1.3 billion iPad fiasco and see how it ended in at least two lawsuits and an FBI investigation. But maybe if we raise taxes, we can fix that too. Honestly, 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 I have a huge heart for education. I love teachers, and I've met many over the years. I believe in the school system, and I want the very best for students and teachers. But there's a misconception that more money equals more success. There are many low-income charter schools overperforming with the aid of engaged parents and engaged teachers. Even within the same school, with the same budget, you can see for yourself some students thriving and succeeding, and others failing. What's happening in the home is often more important than what's happening at school. It's easy and convenient to blame educational failures on budget strains, but in the case of the eighth largest economy in the world that spends half of its wealth on education, a lack of money is not the problem. And regardless of how much more money you vote to dump into this problem, more will always be needed next election. If you vote yes on Prop 15, commercial and industrial properties, basically businesses, would have to pay property taxes based on their market value each year instead of based on their purchase price. And again, agriculture would be exempt. This would raise revenue and the money would go to schools and local governments. If you vote no on Prop 15, you are voting to leave business property taxes where they are. The Darrell Johnson Show says no on Prop 15.